Okay, so I did some work on the chassis and I'll show you in a minute. Um, but first I wanted to discuss the axles because a lot of this revolves around how short can I make the axle shafts. The first thing I did was start with a mid-90s Cadillac DeVille half shafts. These were rebuilt models because I had to start with something. And uh, they're 33 spline going into the transmission, which is female, and 33 spline outer, which is all fine. That's one ton stuff. And I was hoping I could just replace the, uh, the axle shaft itself with a shorter axle shaft. But when I took it apart, I found out that the axle shaft is only an inch in diameter. And it's 35 spline. And honestly, I don't trust, I know some people get away with it, but I don't trust 700 and something horsepower on one inch axles. So then I thought maybe I could bore this. This is the tripoid bearing that sits inside here for this kind of CV joint. I could respline that and make it bigger, but there's just not enough material. <clears throat> and also the uh, CV joint, I mean, that's smaller than my Volkswagen, but so the, the, uh, the idea is here is that this is going to be cut down. A flange is going to be made for a 934 CV, which is this thing. And this is kind of standard uh, equipment in a class one car, which usually have some kind of LS power behind them. So they're plenty big, especially when you consider how big the, uh, the standard Cadillac axle is. And uh, this one is 35 spline, inch and a half. So I'm going to cut this back, make a flange to accept a, 30, a 934 CV, and then weld it right on that tripod. Uh, and then from there, I can just go inch and a half, 35 spline to another one of these CVs on this side that goes to a flange. This is a 934 flange. And then from there, it's going to go to the unit bearing so I can construct the upright or whatever, can, you know, attaches to the uh, swing arm. I was hoping to use, with the kit, comes these the stock Cadillac unit bearings. But the problem with them are, is that um, the bolt circle is it's a weird metric bolt circle and there's just not a lot of rim selection. Plus they're kind of weenie as, as far as the studs, how big they are. So I got uh, an aftermarket 934 unit bearing, which is quite a bit beefier in all regards. It has a standard five on five, four and three quarter bolt circle with much beefier studs. So it's, it's uh, that's how that's all going to work. The, uh, the CVs are, being though they're much bigger, I see this side, they're going to, it's going to have plenty of clearance. But on this side, this is a tripod, tripoid from the original axle shaft. And once that's cut down, it'll, it'll be in, tucked in about like that. And you can see it's, going to take a lot of room there. <laughs> so I think the case will clear, but maybe that bolt back down in there will have to be deleted. We'll see. Um, so that's that's part of the puzzle is uh, getting the axle shaft short enough to get tires, in fact wide tires, underneath stock, stock fenders. Hey guys, we're back. We're going to be dealing with uh, this problem area on the Corvair making it fit. If you saw in the last video, this is taking about half. This is normally two inches wide. And I took about half of it off right there. We still don't have enough clearance. So I'm gonna cut back into here a little bit more. And I'm gonna cut back so we have a half inch uh, left. Um, using this, I'll scribe it. And then trim it back. Starting way back in here, trim it back. And then from here, it's gonna be feathered back into the original structure back there. And so what'll happen is once this is trimmed back here, then I'm gonna plate this whole part and then blend it back into this, the normal one. 
um, with 80,000s, probably 80,000s chromoly, plate it back in. And then, then I'm gonna make, make another wall one inch inside of this, because I need room for the link. So I really don't have more than an inch to go in this way. So I'll make another plate just like this that, that mimics the whole thing. And so it'll, it won't be two inches wide. It's gonna be an inch and a half wide to all I can fit, but it will be um, three plates thick. So it just should hold this area and uh, at least deal with that area. This area over here is not as, not as problematic because that's all the room I need. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just make some plate and uh, plate that area in and call that part good. And then we'll go on to the other structure later. Um, but this is just to start to get this area finalized. After we trim back the channel to the right thickness, it's about a half inch thick, we're going to plate this part starting from here and here and then just finishing across here to tie into here. I had to cut this window out of here because this is where the lengths will be attached and I want more support than just the body structure. So we'll make a bridge here with a tube going to the roll bar to get that added strength. So to make this plate, the template, we'll take a piece of paper. and then cross your fingers. So we'll cut that out. We'll put it in here and then we'll add the other piece. So it looks close enough. I'll make it a little bigger in some spots. And then I'll weld this to here, and then I'll make a separate piece that goes to here to weld it here and here to tie in these two things together.
So here's what the finished product looks like welded in. Um, like I said, it's 80 thousandths chromoly sheet and uh, was welded here and here on both sides. And then this plate was added to tie into this part. Um, wasn't my best welding. I could, guy got mil uh, a lot of excuses, but mostly it comes down to contamination with uh, stuff underneath metal and um, galvanizing and but a uh, little flap wheel and it cleans up okay and this area out here which i'm going to put a doubler plate here is the part i have to wait until i get the swing arm coming out of here and how that's going to be located so i can build make sure i don't make this too thick